Hello designers and welcome back to another Affinity Designer tutorial. Today I'll show you how to use live filter layers, perspective and mesh warp. We'll kick things off with the basics and then ramp it up with a series of mock-ups. So you'll gain a clear understanding of why these tools are useful. Think of them as the dynamic raster counterpart to the vector warp tool. Let's begin. Hello designers, let's start from the beginning. Live filter layers allow you to manipulate an image in a non-destructive way. So when I talk about image, I'm not talking about vectors. If you want to manipulate vectors with warp tools, use the vector warp tool. This one is for many raster images. Think JPEGs, PNGs, anything made of pixels. A photo, for instance. When I say non-destructive, I mean that any change you make is not permanent. You can delete the life filter layer and you'll have your original picture or image left as it was. Okay, so let's go ahead and activate my UI. I just press the tab key, by the way, that's the little shortcut. Any shortcuts you see will be in the bottom left hand corner. So I'm going to delete this photo that was just there for show whilst I talk. And I'm going to drag in a photo so that we can start using these tools. So I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to click and drag in a photo. Couple of things to note. Look in the layers panel. There is my photo. It says photo tower bridge. And another thing in the context toolbar at the top there, you have a few options. It says the image DPI 72 and it's got the scale original size. I can resize it from here or I can do it by hand, but you can see the values change. And also you can just click original size like that. But anyway, I'm gonna do most of this by hand. What I'm gonna do, I've got this path drawn out and I'm gonna try and use the perspective tool to get that look to it. So I'm gonna place it around about here. And the next thing I'm gonna look for is this actual tool, where is it? So head on up to pixel persona, click on that and go up to layer, new light filter layer, and then perspective. Okay, so I've clicked on it and some things have changed. So I have this little box here. It's given me a few options. I'm not really gonna concentrate on that at the moment. Have a look at the layers panel. We have our photo and next to it now we have an icon, the perspective icon. And also notice that the photo has these nodes on it, which basically means I can drag it around and change the perspective. So I'm gonna try and reposition this. I'll just zoom in a little bit. Reposition it so I can see where to drag. Sometimes it might be difficult. If you imagine that black line in the background being a poster or something and you're trying to match up your image with it, um, sometimes it's hard to see behind, right? So what I like to do is head on over to the layers panel, click on the actual photo, and then click on the opacity and just bring it down slightly. Obviously I can't see the nose to manipulate this shape anymore, so I've got to go back to the icon. So just click on that and we're back in action again. So I'm just gonna drag these out and try and match them up with this path that I've drawn out. So now I'm gonna go ahead, click on the image again, just bring up the opacity so we can see what we've done. I'm just gonna delete that perspective line. The next one is mesh warp. This time I'm gonna bring an image in, in a slightly different way. So back to designer persona at the top left there. And this time we're going to use the place tool. Click on that and we're gonna choose a different photo. So I'm gonna click on Photo Volcano. Click on that and click open. So there's a couple of ways this works, right? If you just click once, it just turns up full scale. And remember, you've got these options up here, so you could scale it down if you want. Um, that's one way of doing it, but I'll just show you the other way, the way I like to do it. So I'll just delete that. Again, go back on the place tool, choose the same photo, click open. And this time I'll just click and drag the kind of size I want, something like that. Excellent. Okay, I'll just kind of line it up here and we're gonna do the same again. We're going to apply that mesh warp. So up here to pixel persona, click that, back to layer, new life filter layer, and now mesh warp, click on that. Okay, that's applied. Again, I wanna see behind, I wanna see those lines. So I'm gonna click on the photo, bring down the opacity, and then I'm gonna click back on the mesh warp icon. So let's just start clicking and dragging. So you can notice with this one here, as I'm dragging it, there's actual handles that we can play around with. Uh, first, I like to get the corners in there first. Oops, messed that one up. And click, drag it down there. All right, now I'll start playing around with the handles. So I'll just click and drag it in to where I think it kind of should be. I'm using the trackpad with this as well. So uh, I'm usually using the Wacom tablet or just like a graphics tablet. But when I'm doing my tutorials, I never seem to use it. All right, so that's done and I will click on it, bring the opacity up and there we go. I'll just delete the line that's behind there. So you can see this tool is really cool. 
And remember, I said it was non-destructive. So what if I think I've made a mistake and I don't want that anymore? So there it is. If you go in, there's the perspective there. Let's say I don't want that anymore. I can just press delete and it's back to normal again, you see. Another thing I wanted to note as well, as long as the picture is kind of the same size, you know, both of these were portrait images around the same kind of size. I can just click here, you see, as I've got it selected, up here it says replace image. So because we placed them in this document, now we can replace them. And it's good to replace them with the same size. So if I click on that and I swap that one with the tower bridge picture, ta-da, it's already applied. Excellent. And just to show you the rest of the options we have here. So we have show grid and obviously we can see the grid now. It could be helpful for kind of figuring out that vanishing point. And also we have these options down here, which is rotate clockwise. So it will rotate it in there. And the other one is rotate anti-clockwise. And if you just don't like this um, life filter you've added in there, just press delete and it goes back to normal. All right. So that's the basics. Moving on. Okay, before I launch into creating the mockups for you and showing you how I use it, uh, I just wanna go over what you can actually use this tool on. I did touch upon it before. So basically it's good to use it on raster images. That's why it's here in Affinity Designer, which is mainly a vector-based program. Uh, it's borrowed it from Affinity Photo. You can use it on photos, all the stuff that's written there, JPEGs, PNG, stuff like that. I use it for photos mainly. Now. Don't use it for vectors, there is a vector warp tool. Although you can use this tool, the layer filter on here, it will export as a raster image, so it will be pixely. I will note though, one really cool thing is that you can use this tool on documents such as PDFs, multi artboard affinity files, things like that. I'll be showing you all of this coming up, but I will show you this. So I have a vector object here. It's not just the word, it actually is a vector. And there I have my photo. I can actually mix these two together. So if you look in the layers panel, I have my vector there. If I drag it and clip it inside the picture and I drag it on there, now I can use this tool on there. So I'll quickly go and do that. So I'll click on pixel persona, go to layer, go to perspective, let's say, and I can play around with it and it does manipulate the the vector element of it. And I know that when it comes time for export, that vector element will be rasterized. Just know that, okay? Moving on. Okay, we're working our first real mock-up here. There's a smartphone I made earlier in Affinity Designer. And basically, let's say I'm making an app right now and I wanna see what that front page looks like so I can easily replace it and make any changes. I've made a few pages here and I've exported them at different file types like JPEG, PNG, see it's got some transparent properties. And I also exported a PDF because I wanna show you a few things in relation to that. Also to begin with, I started off with this. This was my mobile phone, my smartphone, and I made the pages exactly the same size so that it fits really well. And then I went into the isometric uh, grid and I started playing around with it to create this little shape here. Very easy to do. I have a, an isometric tutorial, so check that one out. Okay, let's get to it. So as always, I'm gonna delete the image and we're gonna go through the full motions. Head over to the place tool and go to phone one and click open. Okay, I'll just drag out to kind of where I think it should be, maybe something like that. I'm gonna go ahead and change the opacity so that I can easily place it. And again, up to pixel persona, layer, new live filter layer, and we're gonna use perspective because it's all straight lines, isn't it? And I'll just quickly drag the corners in like that. And then I'll start messing around with it to get it right. So I'll start down here. You can tell that the corners are obviously rounded on this phone. And you know, if you're using a photo to apply this in, you might have to draw out in vector a kind of container and then you can clip this image inside of it. So there we go. That's kind of looking okay. So let's sort out these corners, but first let's bring up the opacity for the image. So I've clicked on the image, bring it up and now it just looks straight. It looks wrong, doesn't it? So in my phone, as it's still a vector, I have the screen, which is there. See the rounded corners? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag the front page into the screen there. So it's gonna clip it inside of there. So when I let go, you can see the rounded corners. Now it's nested in there and it all looks like it should do. 
So again, if you're working on a photo and it's a photo of a mobile phone, just trace around with, with the pen tool and then you'll have that shape in your layers panel and then you just click and drag your uh, page or whatever into that. So the next thing is I'm gonna go back to designer persona and I'm going to replace it. So let's say I'm happy with this one, but I wanna see what the next page looks like, see if it looks right. Well, I'll click on the image in the layers panel. There it is. And I'll just click on replace image. And there we can go to the next picture. So phone two. Excellent, that looks good. Let's replace it again. Click on replace. This time I'll look at the PNG. So open up and you can see, cause it's got transparent properties around it. You can see that blue screen underneath. If you didn't want the blue screen underneath, you could always just make changes to the screen like this. So if you've drawn out your one on a photo, you can change it to completely black in the background or whatever you like. So that's cool using PNGs. All right, let's uh, replace it again. So I'll click on the image once more. And this time we're gonna go for the PDF. So I've clicked on the PDF, open. Okay, there's the PDF. So in the contacts toolbar, you see there's a few more options here. It says page one. Obviously this is a one page PDF. I only exported one page, uh, so that doesn't matter. I'll skip through that. I don't need to know that yet. You see this button here, this is a cool one. So this allows me to edit that kind of source file. So if I click on it, I can see the original PDF there and I could decide, hmm, maybe I'll change the color of it to, this looks disgusting, doesn't it? Oh, okay, that looks even worse. So I'll leave it at that so that we know that we've made the change and I'll change that to really dark. Okay, cool. I can click on the X on the embed tab there and you can see the changes have been made. So we can get there just by pressing edit document. But there is another way as well. If you just double tap the image, it opens up the embedded image so you can make your changes there. Okay, moving on, let's see what else we can do. So I've created a new smartphone mockup and this time I'm gonna show you what happens when we embed a multi-page document or a multi-artboard document. Um, we'll start off with an Affinity Designer file. So I'll show you that file now, I've called it Smartphone Pages. So here's our pages, one, two, three. And it's a mix of raster and vector. So obviously the image there is a raster image. And we've got the smartphone from before. And also we've used that photo, the new live filter layer using the perspective tool inside the uh, phone there. And just to show you, there's the new phone and I've made the pages the same size as the screen. So let me just close that now and let's get to work on it. So just like before, we're going to the place tool I'm going to click on that and we're going to navigate to where I've got the .af design file, smartphone pages, and I'll click open. And you see here, this uh, pop-up box is here called place images. Um, I could just click and drag and that would be page one, but I can choose the other pages as well, but I'm just going to stick to page one. So I'll just click and drag it out like that and I'll drag it kind of over so I don't have to play around too much afterwards. Okay, so I've placed it over there. I'm going to turn down the opacity a bit see whether I can uh, help myself now so I don't have to do much, so much playing around later. Okay, let's go to Pixel Persona, go up to Layer, New Life Filter Layer, Perspective. Now I'm gonna go in and start placing these nodes where I think they should be. Okay, that worked out pretty well. Again, I'm gonna go to the Opacity, but first click on the actual layer with the image. So Opacity up, and just like before, it looks rubbish like that, but if we can clip it inside of the actual screen shape, it will work a lot better. In the layers panel, there is my screen. See, it says phone front screen. Always good to label your layers correctly, so it helps you later on down the line. And I'm gonna click and drag that and clip it inside of the screen shape. So you can see that worked pretty well. Let's have a look around. Okay, so the next part is clicking on the image in the layers panel, so it's selected. And now you can see a few differences, right? It says page one. Remember when we put the PDF in before it only had one page? Well, this one has more. So page one looks like that, page two, and page three. You can cycle through, pretty cool, very helpful. And again, you can press on edit document and it will open that embedded document because this is an embedded document now. So remember, you can either double click the image there or you can just click 
edit document. This will show up so you can make the changes you want, just like before, change the color, but I'm just gonna drag this out like this. Just drag it off to the side a little bit so we can see changes happening live. It's good if you have another screen for this. So there we go. Once I click on this image, you see it reverts to all the layers that are within that document, that embedded document. So I've got the background selected. If I just start changing the color, you can see it changes it live in the background, which is pretty cool. Okay, so I'll leave it like that. I could go to the next one, but remember I'd have to click back on here and then change it to page two, and then I can start playing around with page two, etc. So that's a really cool way of using multi-page documents. As long as the image is the same size, it will work seamlessly. Okay, I'll just click on that, and let's replace this document with the PDF. So I'll just click on replace document, Remember I saved it as a PDF as well. So smartphone pages, click on that, open. And you see it's worked just the same. Page one, page two, page three, very cool. In this example, I'm going to use the Mesh Warp Live Filter. So we have a cream here on the left and some kind of business card on the right hand side. So let's go ahead and place some new images in there. I'll just show you what they are. So here they are. I made them in vector, but for the sake of the tutorial, I've converted them to PNGs. Uh, let's say one day somebody asks you, hey, can you stick these PNGs on you know, a mock-up or something? And then this is what you get. I guess you'll have to do something with it. Let's go ahead and place them. So go to the place tool, click on that, and then we'll go to lotion one. And I'll just click and drag it out like that. There we go. We've got some affinity lotion going on here. And I want to make that a little bit smaller. Maybe to kind of fit this. There we go. Okay, that's in the right place. And because it's a PNG, I don't need to change the opacity on this one because I can see kind of what I'm doing. So again, we'll go up to pixel persona, go to layer, new life filter layer, and finally the mesh warp. And I'll just go in and play around with these a little bit just to kind of make it match up. From what I can see here, as the bottle is going around like this, I will copy that. So I'll just drag this down a little bit and I'll do the same with this side. So we can kind of get it right. So it's even, as even as it can be on this tutorial. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click on V, the move tool. I'm gonna click it and drag it down so it's a little bit closer. Now I'll click on the icon again for the mesh warp and I'll just drag it down like this so it kind of matches it again. So something like that, but you can see something's happened here because obviously we're further down the bottle. So I'll just click on V, the move tool, and bring it up to see if it still matches. Yeah, it's pretty much there. So I'll leave it like that. Uh, one thing that you can do to uh, make it look a little bit more realistic is start playing around with the blend modes. So the blend modes are over here. See layers where it says normal there? This is where they are. So you can cycle through to see what looks right for you. Uh, I'll just click on multiply for this one. And let's apply another one. So I've got a little tub here. I'm going to place another one there. So go back to designer persona, click on the place tool, and we'll go to lotion 2 and I'll click and drag that out like this and obviously you can see here I haven't created a perfect circle or square to fit it in there there's a little thing that I like to do is just to create a circle a container and I will place this in there so here we are I'll click on the snapping as well this is quite important click on snapping that icon up there of the magnet and if I go to the center of that it should line up. I'll change the stroke to nothing and I'll change the fill to nothing as well. So there's no color anywhere. And then I'll go down and I'll grab the lotion and I'll just click and drag it into that ellipse that I made. So now when I click it, it is a circle. With this one, I might not even need to. Yeah, I probably won't even need to. What I'm gonna do, instead of using the transform warp tool and all that, just going to offer it up like this so it kind of matches that circle. There we go. So that kind of matches. And then I can bring it in a little bit. Also, I will change the blend mode to multiply. And there we go. We've got a couple of products ready to go. I'm just going to drag one more in. Okay. And it will be the same one. Lotion one in there. 
and I'll just drag it over just so that you can see what the blend modes are actually doing. So as we look at it now, it's a bit pixely when I go that close. You can't see through it, but if I click on the blend mode to, let's say, multiply, you can see behind the texture is coming through, so it kind of makes it look like it's supposed to be there. So if I made that a little bit bigger, there we go. It looks kind of like it's supposed to be there, but you can make that choice and make any changes you need to just by cycling through all of the options. Okay, moving on. Okay, another example with a photo. Let's use the mesh warp live filter again, but this time it's a little bit more demanding on these socks here. So I'm gonna use this image here, but of course I'm gonna get rid of it so we can start from the beginning and go to my place tool, choose my um, Mexican pattern. I'm just gonna drag it out. It is a square. This doesn't look quite like a square, but let's see how it works out. So I'm not gonna draw a container around here. You know, I could go with the pen tool and sort of trace around it and then place it in there, kind of like we did with the mobile phone. I'm just gonna do it by eye and see if it works. If it did look a bit too warped, then I might use that and just scale up this image inside of it. Okay, I think I'll make that a little bit smaller. Bring down the opacity so I can see what I'm doing. Let's have it about, yeah, I'll just have at least one of the corners touching. On to pixel persona, up to layer, new life filter layer, mesh warp. So again, I just drag my corners in not caring about the handles just yet. And I may forward this one if it takes me a little while, or maybe not, let's see. So I'll start off with this side here, and just drag it in. I'll zoom in a little bit there so I can see what's going on. Okay, that side in a little bit more. And for this side, I will bring this up and then start playing around with this side here. Tell you what, let me finish this side first because I can see that might be a problem, or a challenge, I should say, not a problem. Okay, it's a bit blurry over here, so it's kind of hard to tell. Okay, down here, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make sure that that is going around here correctly, and I'll do the same with this one. And what we're gonna do this time, is we're gonna add another node here. So when you go over to the line, if you just click once, see a little circle appears, and I can click again, and there we go, we've got our new mesh line. So we're kind of building up our mesh. So I can click and drag that up a little bit so it doesn't affect these handles so much. We'll go up and do the same here. There's a little bit of a sharp bend going on here. So what I'm gonna do is just bring it up a little bit to make sure I get that sharp corner. I'm gonna create another node there, add to the mesh. I'll make it a bit more of a sharp corner. Okay, at this point here, I'm just going to bring up the opacity so we can see what we're actually missing. So there is some white poking through there. Uh, we're gonna tackle it. That's me done there. I think it looks okay. And again, we can add our blend mode to it. Darken looks okay, but basically you see where that is there. It kind of is darker if we get rid of this image. Like it's a little bit darker there. So I will go Usually it's multiply. See, multiply has kind of added that natural lighting that's surrounding it. So yeah, that looks okay. And that's us using the mesh warp. Okay, in this example, I'm going to apply a style or a bitmap pattern fill to this uh, vector rectangle. And I want it to curve around this edge here. Let's get to it. So like I said, this is a just a vector rectangle. And what I'm gonna do is apply a style to it. So go over to here to the styles tab. Here's the default styles. I'm just gonna click on squirm. Now I'm going to resize it because I want to make it slightly smaller. So I'm gonna press on G, which is the fill tool, which is over here, by the way, on the left-hand side. And you can see there's a gradient going on here. I don't wanna play around with that. How do we work that out? Well, go up to the appearance tab up here and let's go click on fill. Let's get rid of that gradient. I don't want it to be a gradient, so I'll just click on solid up here in the context toolbar. Choose a slightly different color. And with the fill tool still selected, let's rescale this pattern. So we'll head up here to this fill in the appearance panel and we just click and drag to resize it however you like. I like the original one actually, so I'll stick with that. Now what I'm gonna do is, like before, 
pixel persona layer new life filter layer and we're going to press on mesh warp so now i'll click on v the move tool and i'll just place it over here and it's kind of in the right place i'll just go on my opacity and bring it down again so we can see what we're doing now i'll click on the mesh warp icon and i'll start playing around with it Okay, so I've kind of finished. Let's say it's not quite perfect or you're having a hard time doing it. If it's a vector object underneath, you can just clip it inside of that object. So let me go ahead and click on the image to bring the opacity up to see what it looks like. Yeah, it does look like it's bending around there. What I can do is just place it inside. So look in the layers panel. That's my pattern. That's my styles. I'm going to click on that and click and drag it onto the curved edge. And that's clipped it inside there. So now I can go ahead and click on it and we can choose some kind of blend mode. Let's go for the old multiply again. You can see the, oh, there's some quite cool looking ones there, but I will stick to multiply. And you could just go around. It's not fitting there very well. So I could just click on that icon and just drag it over because remember it's clipped inside. You're not going to see anything outside of that shape. Yep, so that is done. So basically you can warp styles or bitmap pattern fills in Affinity Designer just by doing it like that. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for tuning in. If you found it helpful, please subscribe to the channel and you'll get more design insights and creative tips as usual. And a huge shout out to my amazing subscribers for their super thanks. Your support means a lot to me. Until next time, keep designing, keep creating and keep pushing those creative boundaries. See you in the next video.